प्रभु तव मुरति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्न जेह नजर समीप रहो हमारी एह नजर समीप रहो हमारी एह घनश्याम महाराज नि जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नि जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नि जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइटी आर बिलोवेड घनश्याम महाराज the path maker to our liberation our puja pad guru ji puja santo and all of you devotees jai swami narayan in the time of shri ji maharaj there are many many charitras or divine incidences that uh gave us a way to understand maharaj his principles his way of life why he came on this earth out of that portion maharaj when he came on this earth he assumed a human body now just like how humans would have two arms two hands in the same way bhagwan himself also assumed the same body here on this earth he acted the same Nonetheless just to clarify according to the Vachanamrut Gadda middle chapter 13th Maharaj in Akshardham meaning supreme almighty he himself has two arms two legs two eyes two nose or one nose two ears but he is divine yet when he assumes that very form here on this earth many many meaning mostly 99.9% of people misinterpret him as just a mere regular human but not supreme almighty himself divine and always manifest and omniscient so we would like to understand bhagwan swaminarayan's divinity when he comes on this earth so that we can never presume him to be not divine swami narayan hari the title of this story is whatever god does is divine maharaj arrived at the home of har hari bai in varjan in varjan jaria i wish to fall ill maharaj declared hari bai was a devotee who believed everything maharaj did was divine He enthusiastically replied, "It will be our honor to serve you, Maharaj himself." I mean, let's think about it in a practical fashion. As humans living on this earth, can we become ill upon our wish? Simple, yes or no? Obviously not. Can we assume cancer upon thinking that I want to have cancer? can we assume and wish that i have cancer let it be cured no we do not have such kind of powers for us to cure ourselves or to make ourselves ill but bhagwan himself here states to his devotee hari bai that i wish to fall ill meaning that bhagwan can assume and he can take in that illness or he can become cured upon his wish we can see his powers already hari bai gave maharaj a solitary room to stay in overnight maharaj took on a blazing fever maharaj took on a blazing fever everyone was scared at how ill maharaj had become at maharaj's word his servants covered him with blankets and maharaj went to sleep just think about it God himself here comes on this earth and he is covered with numerous blankets because he has a fever 
Who can believe he is God himself? Thinking that Bhagwan himself is a creator, sustainer, and, and destroyer of this earth and this whole universe and countless universes, yet when he rides on his monkey horse, it seems that his horse is uplifting Maharaj and taking Maharaj from one place to another. But actually, in reality, Bhagwan is upload, uplifting the horse, Manki, so that he can be taken everywhere. Nonetheless, the earth itself, Bhagwan is sitting on this earth. Yet it seems the earth is supporting Bhagwan, but in reality, Bhagwan is supporting the earth. That's why such kinds of characteristics cannot be seen by a mere regular eye. One needs to have that touch of divinity to understand Bhagwan's each and every action. Now, getting back to the story, the next morning he awoke and decided not to eat or drink anything. He fasted like he fasted like this for 11 days without taking anything. He was so weak that his servants would have to lift him just so he would take a bath. This is God himself. Thousands and thousands of people worshiping him. Kings who leave everything and become sadhus at his feet. Such kind of a god is taking on such kind of a role who can believe and imagine that this can be true someone called Muktan Swami Swami urged Maharaj to eat something but Maharaj replied I just don't feel like eating anything and then he started saying things no one can understand randomly he began to speak of the good or bad thoughts that each person was having now here we can see a touch of Bhagwan's divine power that people who are besides him, not everyone has the same faith. So some are thinking, what is this? What is he doing? Is this for real? How can he be presumed to be God? How can all these thousands of people and these saints and all these uh, people worship him to be God? He has to be covered with multiple blankets and he has this fever. How could he be called God? Such kind of thoughts were occurring in people's minds. On the other hand, other devotees were thinking, Oh my God, God himself is assuming such kind of a fever, such kind of an illness for the sake of our good well-being, for the sake of our benefit, for testing us. Bhagwan is very kind. Other thoughts are occurring like this in other people's minds. Now Bhagwan himself is reading these thoughts, scanning, just like how an x-ray machine scans a human body and detects the bones, just like how an MRI machine scans each and every muscle and nerve in the body. And through that, the machine is detected. In the same way, Bhagwan's power of detecting others' mind, thoughts, intentions was seen and represented here when he when he grasped these thoughts he would say them aloud randomly so people would think why would he why did he say this why did he say this but the person who was thinking that thought would obviously know that this is what i was thinking meaning Bhagwan was playing a little hide and seek one day he stood on top of his bed and began acting as if he were a sort of if he was in a sort of fight when his servant servants asked him to stop, he replied, I am destroying demons. Who can believe that this is God? Now, it was the thirteenth day of his fast. Muktan Swami pleaded with Maharaj to eat. Maharaj replied, fine, let's eat. Bring banda, barfi, and jalebi. And if you can't find, then bring some soft barley. Haribai said, where will you find Jalebi in the middle of the night, Maharaj? Bhaguji said, Maharaj, where will we find barley in this season? Hearing this, Maharaj grew upset. You can get, you can get as many Jalebis as you like from the market in Buj. 
and lakhs of mounds of millet crop is standing right now and you'll deny deny me just a little Haribai went to another village the same night he awoke a confectioner and he had and he had him prepare jalebis in the middle of the night Baguji left in search of soft barley but found some soft millet to bring back Marat saw both the items and became pleased and he had and he and had a little to eat then he said I want to bathe with a hundred buckets of Ganga water and the runoff should reach the Venu River on the outskirts of the town now a person who has not eaten for 11 days 13 days and is taking on a fever that's very very high in temperature what would happen if that person started to eat sweets immediately what would happen to the person's body what would happen to the person's intestines one cannot imagine but Maharaj was performing a Lila Charitra Maharaj was performing a role for his devotees for the devotees in the future this Charitra is written that Bhagwan is divine he was divine and he will always be divine and this Charitra was also performed for those who were there present looking upon Maharaj's divine Charitra that is this for real is Maharaj doing this for real but this was the real factor so Maharaj ate jalebi and some millet and then he said he wanted to bathe in a hundred buckets of Ganga water where can you find Ganga water there how can someone who is sick bathe with so much cold water Ganga water was very cold so Baguji brought 10 pails of water and bathed Maharaj with it then filling one small bowl from the bath he instructed somebody nearby take this water and pour it into the Venu river when the man returned Baguji said Maharaj the runoff has reached the Venu seeing the service of these loyal devotees who saw his every action as divine Maharaj rid himself of fever ate properly and then went to sleep you know there's a divine charitra of Puja Guruji when he went to Kashi to visit those santos who were studying a couple years back that I would like to share with all of you see Puja Guruji had become very sick and he had gotten diarrhea now anything he would eat it would come right out he had to keep going to shower and it was a very very bad trip now all those santos who only come to Gujarat India every six months for a short vacation of two or three weeks get to spend time with Guruji and Santos but by the grace of Guruji Guruji had come all the way to Kashi but he had assumed this illness so all the Santos were sad and they felt like their trip was ruined because they wanted to spend time with Guruji enjoy uh, Guruji's company listen to Kathavarta but Puja Guruji had diarrhea so this could not happen now one of the santos there he was bold enough and he went to Guruji alone and said Puja Guruji all these santos want your company they're here you are here for giving us some enlightenment and we want to experience this enlightenment but you have diarrhea and due to that we are not able to enjoy your company please stop all this illness this is what this Swami said Puja Guruji said, said no problem that very night after this sadhu had encountered Guruji and told him this the next morning Guruji was all fine no illness no diarrhea it had it it had begun like nothing had happened all the santos were amazed and also glad at the same time so they can enjoy Puja Guruji's company but showing that the Ekantik Satpurush just like how Maharaj can take on 
illness and also let go of it. Bhagwan himself constantly lives inside of the Akantik Sadpurush and also performs such kind of charitras where I just shared with you in the life of Puja Guruji how he had assumed such kind of an illness and then he let go of the illness by the kind by the kind and humble request of a sadhu. The next morning, Maharaj had a new play in mind. Bring the bu bullet cart now. I want to go to Gajara. When the cart came, Maharaj laid down in it and said, the cart is too short. Pull it to make it long longer. Hearing this, his servants began to pull the cart to please him. Just then, some of the hinges on the cart creaked and Maharaj jumped off. Something is weary with his cart, he said. The devotees got into the palanquin, and Mara traveled into another village. There a small wagon came from Gadara. Mara rode in it until another village came. There another devotee came for Darshan. He had doubts in Maharaj's divinity, having seen Maharaj's action in, in the previous village. Mara showed him his virat form, meaning his great form, the one which holds all the creation in itself. Then Maharaj went into Karyani and ultimately reached Gadara, where he ended his divine display of illness. Through this divine incident, we can understand Maharaj to be divine. But can you imagine being, or can you imagine having to go through such kind of an examination if you are presently there? Yes. As devotees of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, we understand Bhagwan to be divine. But our true test, if we were taken back in time 200 years ago, and if Bhagwan Swami Narayan was displaying such kind of illnesses and such kind of charitras, would our mentality still hold the same kind of, you can say, firmness as we have right now? It's very difficult, even in that time. There were many people who assumed that we are devotees of Bhagwan. Yet, they even saw the divine powers of God, divine miracles that Bhagwan performed, putting people into samadhi by the snap of the fingers, by just walking, hearing the click sound from his sandals. Birds, would go, birds and humans would go into samadhi. Such kind of charitras Bhagwan performed and they saw this. Yet, when Bhagwan fell ill, they could not maintain that same kind of mentality that Bhagwan is divine. Yet, taking into that point, we as bhaktos here coming to temple and having the darshan of Bhagwan's idol, we believe that Bhagwan is divine. Yet, if we were taken back into time, as I mentioned, can we still keep that same kind of mentality? Probably not. So now, the next question arises. What is the solution? How can we keep our mentality stable enough to presume Bhagwan to be divine at all times, whatever he performs, whenever he performs it, however he performs it? Well, number one is Sant Samagam. Associating with his Ekantik Satpurush, who completely, constantly believes that Bhagwan is divine, he was divine, and he always will be divine. If you associate with him, if you understand his uh, principles, if you grasp his understanding and instill it into your heart, then definitely one will be able to understand Bhagwan to be divine. And at any time, if Bhagwan were to come in front of you and perform a charitra, then you would not have a single doubt. This is what Bhagwan wants us to do. Because even after going to Akshardham, after this life, if Bhagwan were to perform such kind of a charitra, which we could or we did not expect, then even in Akshardham, we would raise a doubt that I believed all this time and worshipped Bhagwan here on this earth for 70, 80 years, that Bhagwan is divine. And then here in Akshardham, he is performing such kind of a task 
or such kind of an action, how can he be called divine? Even doubts can arise in Akshardham if we do not get the same, un if we do not get the understanding we need from the Ekantik Satpurush here on earth. That's why it's very important to do Sansama. And the second solution is to read the Sastras, such as the Vachnamrut, Swamini Vato, Sadguru Gopan Swamini Vato. These kinds of books can help us consume and understand that Bhagwan is divine, he was divine, and he always will be divine. So as growing uh, devotees here in this satsang, this is one of the features that is very difficult to grasp. But by associating with such an ikantik satpurush as in the form of our Puja Guruji, and by reading the sastras such as the Vachnamrut Swamini Vato, we can understand Bhagwan and his ikantik satpurush's principles and get a bit better understanding and perspective that Bhagwan is divine himself. Saying this, my humble Jai Swami Narayan.